Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. Welcome back. Today's video is sponsored by HelloFresh, the food delivery service that brings step-by-step -step instructions and pre-measured ingredients right to your doorstep, making home-cooked meals a reality. So HelloFresh is really great for breaking out of recipe ruts. Every week you have over 20 different chef-curated seasonal recipes to choose from, and this week my family really enjoyed the Trattatoria Veggie Panini. So HelloFresh is really flexible. You can change your delivery dates, you can skip a week if you like, and you can add additions like garlic bread and cookie dough. HelloFresh meals begin at $5.66 per serving, so get started with eight free meals. That's $80 off your first month of HelloFresh by heading over to HelloFresh.com and using the code EMMYMADE8. Big thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. Now today, I'm going to be tasting something I've never tasted before, and is Yo Pon Tea. Now I had never heard of this before until lovely Travis got in touch with me and told me about it. So Yopon is the only caffeinated plant in North America. I didn't even know we had caffeinated plants in North America, but apparently Yopon, which is actually a holly, has natural forms of caffeine in it. It's actually related to Yerba Mate, which is found in South America, which is also a holly plant. The scientific name for Yopon is Ilex vomitoria. Vomitoria meaning to induce a vomiting, which is actually not true. What the settlers might have actually witnessed was a ritual in which fasting was involved and very, very large amounts of Yopon was consumed in a ritual practice. So Yopon itself just consumed as a tea will not create any kind of vomiting. Now, how it got its name is quite interesting. A English botanist named William Ayton named it Ilex vomitoria. Although Carl Linnaeus, the father of taxonomy, named Yopon Ilex Cassina vera, completely different name. So why do they call it vomitoria? As it turns out, William Ayton had connections with the East India Company, which at the time was basically the international monopoly of tea, which is Camellia sinensis, which contains caffeine. And perhaps they thought that the North American version of a caffeinated drink might be some kind of competitor. It's a theory, right? But I think a pretty good one, because here we have a native growing plant that creates caffeine, more similar to your mate. And in terms of level of caffeine, it's kind of in between black tea and coffee. And it tastes good. It's easy to grow. So let's just get rid of the competition and give it this name that's scary. So today, thanks to Travis and his mom, Lisa, Lisa picked the Yopon tea for me and sent it to me. So thank you guys both so much for bringing this to my attention. I had never heard of it before. Yopon or Casina grows in the southeast of the U.S., all the way from Virginia down to Florida, all the way across to Texas. So this came all the way from Texas. Lisa has some property down in western Texas, and she regularly picks Yopon, and she actually gave me some information about it. She uses hedge clippers to clip small branches from the tree, then she triple washes them, and then she lets them dry on drying racks. And the next day, she puts them in large containers to dry for a couple weeks. Then she removes all the leaves and then stores them in a sealed container. She said that's also very important to properly identify the yopon. She says the male tree has small red berries, which I find surprising because I always thought it was female plants that bear fruit. But this is what Lisa's telling me. There's also a tree that looks similar to yopons called the possum haw. The possum haw is poisonous and is dormant in winter while yopons are evergreen. So to this day, yopon continues to grow well in the southeast. It's a very hardy plant. It can live in marshes. It can tolerate drought. It can tolerate salt water. It's just a really hardy plant. People use it actually as a decorative plant, as hedges. So if you live in the southeast, you've probably seen yopon before. Lisa says she places a handful of leaves in a small blender and pulse them until they are crushed, but not too fine. Look at the beautiful leaves. Remember, this is related to the holly, so it's got little serrated leaves, but they're not sharp and spiny like the holly that we see around Christmas time. I'm just gonna put this whole lot in here. Let's see how finely this crushes it. All right, here we go. It's gonna be a little loud. It's crushed up, but it's not too fine. This water is set at 200 degrees, which is the same temperature as black tea. So how does Yopon tea fit into the history of the Civil War? So as the war progressed, things like coffee and tea were becoming increasingly difficult to get due to northern blockades. So many soldiers resorted to Yopon tea, which was something that was readily available. 
but then it developed this sort of negative connotation because it was a reminder of the loss and of the difficulty of the time. So that may be another reason why Yoponti fell kind of out of favor. Okay, so my tea has been brewing here for a couple of minutes and it has this beautiful color. Look at this. Alrighty, let's go ahead and give this a taste. Cheers. Oh, it's very nice. I don't know, I was expecting it to be bitter, but it's not bitter at all. But it has a very similar kind of grassy green flavor of green tea, but it's totally without any kind of bitterness whatsoever. It's similar to your mate, which is not surprising because they're in the same family. They're both Ilexes, they're both Hollies. But your mate, I found, especially if you let it steep for quite a while, develops a stronger flavor. This is not bitter at all. It's lovely. And in terms of being a delivery mechanism for caffeine, this is much lighter and refreshing than say something like coffee, which is more heavy bodied and thicker in texture and in flavor and in terms of that kind of tannicky bitterness. Don't get me wrong, I love coffee. I have it almost every morning, but this is so light and refreshing. I love it. And I'd say much more similar to something like green tea, which we drink a lot of during the winter time. It's herbaceous and green and grassy without any bitterness whatsoever. It just goes down easy and smooth. It's lovely, absolutely lovely. We'll see how much pep it gives me too. <laughs> so big thanks again to Travis for bringing Yopon tea to my attention. And big, big thanks to Mama Lisa for preparing the Yopon, for sending it to me, and for including all the great information. Big thanks also to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. Get eight free meals, that's $80 off your first month by heading over to hellofresh.com and using the code EMMYMADE8. Thank you guys so much for watching. I wouldn't be here without you. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. Like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Take care. Bye. <laughs>